Hey, hey you! Ever wanted to build that dream Lego castle but didn't have the cash? This is the tutorial for you. By the end of this video you will have everything you need to build anything you want with Lego, publish your designs and become a certified Lego designer, which should give you enough money to buy your own Lego. And all for free! All the software in this video is free, provided you have a decent computer and graphics card. The first step is to download LEGO Studio 2.0 from bricklink.com and install it. We will be skipping the tutorial for this video, but you should do it. The main startup menu for LEGO Studio has a bunch of pre-made LEGO sets for you to download and play with, for free. I'm just going to jump straight into one of my models, the LEGO Indebele Village, which is available on the LEGO's IDEA website for your support. The individual LEGO bricks take a few moments to load in, but it's well worth the wait, and as you can see, we can freely view our model. Use the middle and right mouse buttons to pan and rotate the camera. As I hover my mouse over the model, you will see these blue outlines appear. These indicate the boundaries of the submodels. Submodels are groups of LEGO blocks that you designate that can then be manipulated like individual blocks. Here is an example of the application of one such submodel. I can flip it up and down. I had a lot of fun building this model brick by brick, and I even designed some custom parts, such as the clothing, the cow, the cat, and these Ndebele minifigures. But we'll get to that later in the video. For now, let's start with the basics. I'm going to create a new project, and just start by clicking blocks on the left-hand panel and dragging them onto the grid. The blocks are arranged by category, and I'm using these flat plate blocks to create a base for my model, using these rounded pieces for the corners. It's easy to change to whatever color you want by simply selecting the desired blocks and choosing the color in the right hand panel. I'm going to pick green for grass. Now that the base is done, I want to start working on the walls, but before I do that, I want to create a sub model. As I mentioned before, a submodel is a group of blocks that you can use and manipulate like a single block. It's easy to create submodels, just select the desired blocks and press Ctrl G for group. The option can also be found in the model menu under Create into Submodel. Once the submodel is created, you can go into it by double clicking on it, which allows you to edit the individual parts. You can then exit a submodel by double clicking on an empty space or by clicking this blue text in the bottom right hand corner. Once a block has already been placed on the scene, it's much easier to just clone that block using the clone tool. Toggle the snap option to determine whether the bricks click together and toggle the collision option to determine whether you can place bricks inside themselves. Occasionally you'll run into a scenario where the snap option does not work correctly, in which case it is useful to use the connect tool. Using the move tool to move blocks into open spaces and then using the connect tool is a great way to get any combination of blocks you can dream of. Now that the walls are looking good, I want to make space for a door. So I type in the word door into the search box. There are a lot of doors to choose from. And once I find the one I like, I modify the doorway to fit it in. This door will not be able to open properly due to the studs, but we'll come back to that later to fix it. I use the search box again to find a window that I like, and then I finish the tops of the walls. After playing around with the colors, I decide to make some alterations to the window. Now that I'm happy with the window and the walls, it's time to fix the door problem. Because the walls are all a part of the same submodel, we can easily lift them up using the movement gizmo, these arrows, to make space for some foundations. I start building the foundation by outlining the perimeter and I fill in the gaps using flat plate blocks, making sure to use blocks without the studs to accommodate the opening and closing of the door. I use a mixture of studded and flat pieces for the interior so that we will be able to place furniture and minifigures inside. Then I made this little Minecraft style single bed with a checkerboard pattern. I want to get a sense of scale for my house, so I select a minifigure from the block picker. I prefer to build a minifigure out of individual parts instead of selecting a pre-built minifigure from the block picker. 
Unfortunately, the selection of minifigures is quite bad, but we'll be making our own minifigures later in this video. I want to keep this momentum up, so I start building the roof with these slope blocks, mixing up the sizes to create this brickwork pattern. While building the floor for the attic, I come up with this crazy, ambitious idea to implement an unheard of LEGO design feature, a ladder. Using bars from the block picker, I start tinkering with the lengths and heights to get the perfect fit for my ladder. I make a roof submodel to make this a little easier and to help with the symmetry later. It's quite a tight squeeze and I have a little trouble fitting in my ladder, but I eventually manage by removing some of the foundation pieces and painting the base plate grey to fit in with the rest of the floor. I take a moment to step back from the roof design and add a little bit of foliage and objects around the hut to give it a little bit of character. I spend quite a bit of time redesigning the roof and adding way too many archways and then these pillars at the end to finish it off. I colour some of the grass yellow in order to make it look like sand and that transforms the model into a beach house. I'm quite happy with this for the purposes of demonstration so let's move on to rendering. Eventually we will export to Blender, but LEGO Studio comes with a built-in render engine that requires minimum effort to use and which produces beautiful results. In order to render in LEGO Studio, pan and rotate your scene to set up the camera angle in the viewport. Click File, then Render Image to see a preview of your composition. Mine is not quite centered, so I close the window and pan the scene to center it in the viewport and then I repeat the process. File, render image. That looks much better. Now we scroll through the settings to pretend that we know what it means and then just hit the render button. It should come out okay the first time. The settings are actually quite self-explanatory and there are some really cool options for detailed scratches. After a few minutes or moments, depending on your PC, you should have a beautifully realistic and accurate image of your LEGO build. If you got this far, congratulations! Ha! The next part of the video is a little more advanced as it involves Blender, exporting and importing custom LEGO parts, and installing add-ons. If that sounds like something you can handle, then let's jump right in. Let's import our model into Blender. First make sure Blender is installed on your computer by downloading it from the link provided and installing it. I highly recommend using the LDraw add-on for Blender as it comes with built-in colors and LEGO materials. Sure, we could use the Collado file format, but then we would have to release all the sub-models in your project first, select counterclockwise winding order with right-hand coordination, fix everything, unparent everything, fix the numerous importing issues, and then painstakingly color every block. That would work in theory, but I will teach you a better method. Go to the GitHub page for Import LDraw, link in the description. Scroll down to this link that takes you to the releases page and download the latest release. Once the zip file for your add-on has downloaded, go into Blender and install the plugin by going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, then click install and browse to the downloaded zip file. If you install it successfully, it should appear in the add-ons list. You can then enable it. Now we can go to LEGO Studio and export our model as an LDraw file. Now we can easily import to Blender by... Oh, hold on. Oh yes, we need to reference a library first. You see, LDraw is an open source library of 3D model LEGO bricks, and we need to download that library in order for the importer to know what the bricks look like. This is actually pointed out in the LDraw GitHub description, so I would have known if I had just read it. Follow this link to LDraw.org and download the complete collection. Then unzip it to a familiar place on your PC. Now when you import an LDraw model in Blender, copy the path where your library is located and paste it into this box called LDraw File Path, and voila, we have imported our model with all the colors preserved. 
As you can see, there are still some issues with importing some models, such as the minifigures and these windows. We are unfortunately limited by the models that are available in the LDRAW library. You can overcome this limitation and fix this issue by adding custom parts to your own LDRAW library, as I have done with the cow, the cat, and these Indebele minifigures. You can literally create any LEGO brick you desire and add it to LEGO Studio and import it to Blender. To begin with, download and install LEGO Part Designer from bricklink.com, link in the description. To fix the issue of the minifigure import, create a new minifigure project in Part Designer. You can immediately start importing your custom images, which I have prepared beforehand but you can skip this part if you don't feel like designing your own minifigure. I prefer to do each part individually anyway. Once the model is loaded, you can select the individual parts and press the tool icon followed by the edit icon to change the texture. Once you are finished texturing, or if you wanna skip this part, select everything and press export to studio in the top right hand corner. Type in the name of the minifigure and select export. Now, in LEGO Studio, if you select custom parts from the drop-down menu, you will see all the custom parts you have designed. Amazingly, I can select these parts and build with them, and they work quite well. Now, to get these parts into Blender, you will need to find the custom parts on your hard drive and copy them into the LDRAW library. You can find the parts in your app data slash local folder under stud.io custom parts. Copy all of these .dat files into your LDRAW library in the parts folder. Now, when you export and import your model again, the new custom parts will be imported too. Of course, if this is too complicated, you can always export and import the Kilada file format instead. Oh, you noticed my cow and cat models? I made those in Blender from scratch and exported them as OBJ meshes and imported them into Part Designer. They are also available for download on CG Trader if you want to add them to your own projects. I made all the connections in Part Designer and they work just like the other LEGO bricks in LEGO Studio. Amazing! 3D modeling your own parts is not that difficult and I believe you could figure it out but there are loads of other tutorials on that subject already, and there are some tricks to it, so that's a subject for another video. Setting up your scene to render in Blender is getting easier and easier with the new updates. All you need to do is add a sun or some light source and a camera. Here are some of my first renders of my beach hut. As I mentioned, the LDRAW add-on comes with built-in LEGO materials that you can open up and edit in the shader editor by selecting these green nodes and pressing tab. Here you can edit the properties of the LEGO materials to your liking and add whatever images and textures you like to your models. Unfortunately, this topic is beyond the scope of this video, but there are many videos on YouTube, some of which are specifically tackling rendering LEGO bricks. Here is an image of my setup, which you can copy. Animating these LEGO scenes is not too difficult either, but unfortunately this is beyond the scope of this tutorial, and there are many other tutorials on YouTube covering this exact topic. I will simply add that Blender is an amazing tool, and with a little effort I believe you will be able to achieve anything you set your mind to. Thanks for watching! I hope this helped and that you learned something fun to do with your lazy Sunday afternoons. If you would like to support this LEGO Ideas project, just sign up for a LEGO Ideas account. You can do it with your Facebook or Google accounts pretty quickly, and then just hit the support button on our page. We'd also love to hear from you, so make yourself heard in the comments section. Thanks again for watching, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Love you lots.